Hey, what's going on? This is your boy, yours truly, the one and only Derek Gordon, aka DG Mask on. And for those who don't know, the reason why I do this, honestly, and say DG, DG, Derek Gordon, that's my initials. And it's like, you know, everybody has their like intro, their like thing. <laughs> and this is just, I don't know, I'm just being creative, but. And as you can see, your boy is growing out the scruff. Yes, I'm, I'm growing it out. And this is the, the quarantine scruff, I call it. <laughs> the quarantine scruff. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but first and foremost, hope everyone, you know, is continue to continue to keep staying safe and, you know, practicing social distancing, you know, especially through this time. And I felt it was only right because it's been a while. Um, that you know hit you guys with another video today and we're closing in on 2k subs um which has been you know incredible how you know this channel has been growing lately so i appreciate you guys support and you know if you're new to the channel uh, please hit the subscribe button down below and turn on those post notifications so you know every time your boy uploads a video so we are back with another story time video. And today, <laughs> as you can see from the title, um, this is gonna be interesting. Um, you know, as I was thinking about this video, I was just like, wow, like it, it just brought back a lot of memories and you know, a lot of sneaking around that I did. So without further ado, my first time, my first relationship with a guy while being in the closet. Uh, I mean, where to begin, honestly? Uh, well, let's just say how we met, um, you know, and I'm not going to put his business or anything out there as far as like give his name away, just, you know, out of respect for him. Uh, but we met on the infamous Grinder. <laughs> you got to love it. You got to love Grinder. Um, and, you know, I met him actually a couple days before I was going to, you know, Club Paradise, you know, that was my stomping grounds, um, you know, in New Jersey. Um, and I reached out to him and, you know, he messaged me back and, um, you know, we met at the club and, you know, it was almost like a love at first sight type of thing, to be honest. Um, now, honestly, the whole getting into a relationship aspect was a lot harder because, I mean, those who know, who you know, been in the closet know that, you know, you have to maneuver a little differently. You know, you're in the closet. So it's not like you can just, you know, you, you be out and about anywhere holding hands and this and that. Or um, So, of course, there were plenty of times where he would be calling me and I would have to, like, go outside and all that. But we'll say that for later. Because um, I'm going to take you guys step by step. As far as, like, how it was for me, you know, my first relationship while I was in the closet, it was... It was, I mean, I was in love, of course, but it was interesting um, at the same time because I've never been in that situation before, you know, let alone having to hide who I love, which is nerve wracking. You know, those who, you know, been, who've been through that, you know, it's not fun. You know, someone who you love and adore, but yet, you know, you can't, you know, display them. You have to hide and do all these things. It's, it's not fun at all. Um, so we met at the club and, you know, we hit it off. Right. And, you know, we had a kissing contest, you know, because for me personally, like I, I have to say it, you know, for me, I consider myself the, the best kisser in my class. And when I say class, there's a lot of people in that class, regardless of age group. <laughs> I'm the best kisser in my class. Yes, um, I am. Um, and that's how we hit it, started it off. And, you know, I told him that. And, you know, um, and it wasn't a cocky thing. Of course, as you know, it's a very playful thing. I think it's a very silly thing. Um, but I am a great kisser. I am. <laughs> so um, he kept saying, like, you know, he kept rating me, like, every time, the whole night, he had me, like, at number 10. And, you know, the first time we kissed, he was like, all right, you're probably in my top 10. And then as we kept kissing and kissing and kissing, you know, I moved to top five, then, you know, four, three, two, and then number one. And I just felt for me, that was just so cute and just so, 
intimate at the same time. And just, you know, we, the connection was just growing while we were doing that. And we just hit it off from there. Um, we honestly hit it off from there. And, um, but it took a turn for the worse. It, it took a turn for the worse. And I'm not going to say it, it didn't have anything to do with, you know, um, him. Uh, so, and, and, and social media, boy, it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Um, I follow him on Instagram. So he posted a picture of us. Like we took a picture and he posted it and I liked it. Now, you know, on Instagram, you can go, you can see what pictures, the people who you are following, you can see what other pictures that they like. So he, uh, I liked the picture, of course, of me and him. And then I get a text message from one of my teammates. No, he called me actually. And he said, he said, everything's good. I said, yeah, why? Like, I'm just making sure everything good. I'm gonna call you right back. He hung up and I'm like, what is he talking about? And he sent me a picture of me and my ex, my, my partner at the time. And my heart just dropped. I was, oh my gosh. I had to, the, the, I, I did the home alone face. Like I was just, Man, it's this. Excuse me. Sorry, it just it just it just brought back a lot because it, it honestly it uh it sucks that you know. Um, I mean, the things that I went through, man. I, sorry, let me compose myself. Let me come. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that that was tough. Honestly, that was that was tough. All right, I'm sorry. Hold okay. on. Yeah, so he, he found out and um, he sent it to me and I was just, I was, I was like, it's over like this. this they found out, they know, um, this is it. And yeah, they, it was, it, I, I didn't know what to do. I honestly didn't know what to do. The first thing I said was, um, I said that, oh no, he was just a fan, you know, he, he was just a fan. He knew me from basketball and he wanted to take a picture. So I took a picture with him. And I don't know what made me say that. <laughs> I don't know what made me say that. But I mean, we at least I've been there that, you know, you're getting put on the spot and you just, you you have to lie in some way. Even if it's the craziest explanation, you lie. Um, and, and that's why, you know, I, I, I'm sorry for getting emotional um, earlier, but like I, I was this close from fully like breaking down on camera, but I, I didn't. <laughs> Cause I, I haven't talked about this in, in a very long time, but I, I wanted to share with you all just as far as like, you know, some of the experiences that I went through and you know, how it was for me. Um, so I don't, they didn't forget that by all means. Cause when I went back to campus, they were heckling me and all that stuff because of it. So and teasing me, which uh, I, I, you should never back put someone, make them feel as if like they have their back up against the ball and they, they're defensive. You should never treat any human being that way. And I'm very thankful that me personally, that I'm mentally strong, that I was able to handle those things that was being thrown at me because, boy, I. It's, it's, it's not fun to tease people, regardless. You know, even if I wasn't gay, I wouldn't be teasing anyone if they were. You know, it, it's, you know, we're all human beings and, you know, it shouldn't matter who we want to love. So, um, so, <laughs> so there, there'll be times where <laughs> we'll be going out to the club and, he, I, he wouldn't come pick me up in front of my house. I would tell him, meet me around the corner. And it was so crazy because my mom would, she asked me one day, <laughs> she said, why is he picking you up around the corner? Like, why? Is, I was like, nah, because I guess it's easier, 
you know, for him to just go that way instead of turning around. And, really? Like, they were, I was saying some of the craziest things, but, yeah, he would literally, like, pick me up around the corner and, uh, like, that's, those are the things that I was doing. Like, even when we got into little arguments, he would always go around the corner and then he'll come out the car and we'll talk and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, the, the things you do for love, boy, I tell you, um, not even for love, the things you do when you're in the closet, because, man, sheesh, that was, that was, that was crazy. That was I was, I mean, the more that I look back at it, that specific situation, it was like I was really doing everything I could to not get caught. Um, but we had love, we had fun times. Don't get me wrong. When I was in my comfort zone, as far as like being amongst other, you know, gay people, it was, I was, it was like I was at home. I was at home. You know, I wasn't worried about looking over my shoulder. I was enjoying time with me and my boyfriend. But yeah, there were times just asking when well, he would come see me play basketball. Um, you know, he uh, he went in, he would park in the parking lot that's kind of not necessarily close to my dorm, but uh, kind of far where I would have to walk. And it was just yeah, I would, and that's just you know being sneaky, um, being very sneaky. He came to a game one time. He popped his head in, and I saw him and my teammates who teased me and heckled me, remembered a picture and saw him and said, hey, that's such and such. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, my. And this is when we were stretching. We were stretching, getting ready for the game. And I saw one of my teammates point out another teammate and say, oh, that's that's the guy. That's the guy. And I look up and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I was so embarrassed. And by all means, I'm sure you guys had plenty of crazy stories as well, but you know, it, there were a lot of times where I, you know, I was trying to be as sneaky as I can, but I knew, like, it, in a sense, it was like, there's no point in being sneaky anymore. But I, of course, knowing me, I couldn't do that because I wasn't out. But it's just like, it, it still amazes me to this day because this, this stuff is still going on to this day. You got people who are bisexual. You got people, you know, it, people who are in the closet. And, you know, you got people who are you know, in the closet, but they're worried about their professional career, so they're not coming out. It's it's sad that I wouldn't be surprised if there's more gay people on this planet than it is straight. It would not surprise me one bit, and that's including bisexual. You got to throw them in there, you know. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter at the end of the day. Love who you want to love. Um, so, yeah, we... We're together for actually a couple of years. We were together for, um, and then we just kind of just grew apart. Um, because as you know, we did the long distance relationship. It wasn't like, oh, hey, yeah, come on, move in with me, or I'm moving with you, and you know, it wasn't possible. But but it worked. It it worked for the time. But just like I said we just grew apart. You know, I'm I'm a huge believer in that. You know, I've I've done a lot of relationships. I've been in five relationships, and four out of the five were long distance. And that's because I was in school. And I look at it like this. If you love the person, distance doesn't matter if you love the person. Because eventually, you know, you two are going to, you know, meet up and, you know, you're going to be living together and stuff like that. But love has no distance. You know, when you love somebody, it doesn't matter where they are. You know, you you two are in love. So, um, yeah. So that was, that was, I went through some things. I, I went through some things. Uh, it was... Just like I said, some were funny now that I look back at it, and there were a lot of down times where, yeah, as you can see, you know, that was that hit home for me. Um, and that's just even, it's just even hard to talk about. And just like I said, that's just because I'm having to relive these moments. But I do hope that, um, you know, this video, you know, made you guys laugh a little bit. Hopefully, I didn't make any of you cry. Um, you know, because I can be a bit of a crier at times, uh, depending on what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys, you know, continue to keep staying safe. And, you know, um, yeah, um, down below in the comment section, please, uh, whatever you guys want me to talk about, um, just put it down in the comment section and, uh, and I'll look over it. Because I'm always willing like this, like I'm making videos based off of what 
honestly, I feel you guys want to hear. And, you know, whatever you guys leave in the comment section, I'll take it into consideration and make that the next video. But, you know, I 100% appreciate each and every one of you for stopping by and watching this video. And, you know, returning subscribers, you know, thank you so much for the support. Um, really means a lot. And hope you guys, like I said, continue to keep staying safe throughout this time. I hope this video makes you laugh, um, cry, smile, whatever um, it may be. I just felt that it was only right that I pop out a video for you guys and uh, just give you that story time video. Um, so as you know, this is your boy, your truly the one and only Derek Gordon, a.k.a. D.G. Continue to stay safe and blessed and uh, looking forward to talking to you guys very soon. And I'll also leave my social media accounts down below as well.